Hey everybody, Mr. Lake here with another chemistry lecture video. Just a quick lecture today on the mole. Not the fuzzy creature, but the chemistry mole. So let's get into it. The mole is a number. Literally, in chemistry, we use the word mole as a name for a specific number, and that's the number that is on the screen. 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd power. Now this is also called Avogadro's number. So all of those things mean the same thing. The mole, Avogadro's number, both of them mean 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Why that number? Seems kind of random. Why 6.02? Why not just 6.0? Why to the 23rd power? Seems like there must be some reason why it's this specific number. And if you're curious, it was defined as the number of atoms in exactly 12 grams of pure carbon-12. Now, I, I'm forgetting exactly what the reason was behind that definition. I'm not sure if maybe carbon-12 is just really easy to isolate and purify at the time um, or, or what the logic was there, but in 12 grams of carbon-12, there are 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms, and that's where the number of the mole came from. Now, just to reiterate, just to make this really, really clear, it is just a name of a number. So kind of like dozen is the name for 12, or pair is the name for two, or duo is the name for two, or uh, score is the name for 20, right? We've got a couple of different things like this in the English language. It's just the name of a number. So anytime anyone says a mole of something, they're just referring to a quantity. So if you have a mole of donuts, that's 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd donuts. If you have a mole of carbon atoms, it's 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd carbon atoms. Whatever the thing, how, however big it is, however complex it is, it's just a name of a number. Now, one thing that's really important for us to really like get kind of, what's the word I'm looking for? Internalize is the size of a mole or the extent of the number 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd power. If you wrote that out with all of its zeros, it's 602 sectillion. So not millions, not billions, not trillions, not quadrillions, not quintillions, sectillions. So it's a, it's basically 602 with 21 zeros after it. It is a massive, massive member number, unfathomably large. Let me give you some examples. If you had a mole of marbles, you would have a ocean of marbles three miles deep covering the entire earth. If you had a mole of $100 bills and you stacked them on top of each other, they would go from the sun to Pluto and back 7.5 million times. Or here's an example that I really like. If you had, if you inherited a mole of pennies on the day you were born and you spent a million dollars a second until you died at the age of 100 years old, you would have spent less than a tenth of a percent of your money. Spending a million dollars a second for 100 years would be less than a, it would be like one one hundredth of one percent of your money if you had a mole of pennies. It's an, it's like a ridiculously large number, infathomable to the human brain, and yet, if you have a mole of copper, it's only like this much. So in addition to being a fun mental exercise in thinking about large numbers, the mole is also a great way to explain that atoms are incredibly small, right? If you had a mole of marbles, it would cover the whole earth in a three mile deep ocean of marbles. But if you have a mole of copper atoms, it's about half a cup. So atoms are 
unbelievably tiny, which is really the reason why we have the mole in the first place. If you wanted to measure out a certain amount of copper, or let's say water, if you want to measure out a certain amount of water, would it make sense to say, I would like 18 quadrillion atoms of water in that cup, please? No, that doesn't make any sense. That is not a unit of measure that makes sense for us at the scale at which we live. So in chemistry, we have the mole. The mole is still based on the number of atoms. So it's still based in how much like quantity of, of things are there, but it's at a scale that we can understand. If you said, I would like 3.5 moles of water in that cup, please. That's something that we could measure out more easily. Uh, chemistry joke. An avocado cut into six times 10 to the 23rd pieces is a guaca mole. All right, moving on from that disgusting display. Using the mole gives us the first chemistry conversion factor that we're going to work with. So we've done some dimensional analysis practice. And now you have the mole, which is a new equivalency or a conversion factor that you can work with. Right? This is the conversion factor right here. One mole equals 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd particles. Particles is just a generic term for an individual unit. So if we're talking about a pure element, then particles would be atoms. If we're talking about a um, compound, particles would be molecules. If we're talking about donuts, particle would be a donut, right? It's whatever single unit of that thing is. So here's an example of how you could use the mole as a conversion factor. If you had three no moles of an unknown substance and you wanted to figure out how many particles of that substance you had, what you could do is you could set up a dimensional analysis. And of course, what we always do before we do dimensional analysis is we identify What is happening? Hold on. I got to unplug this and replug it back in. Something is weird with regards to my template tablet. There we go. All right. Fixed it. So what we know is that we have three moles. We want to know particles. So just like any other dimensional analysis, what we're going to do is we're going to set up one of these. We're going to put what we know in the upper left. Whatever units are in our known are going to show up here as well. So we can just go ahead and write those there. And we want to know how many particles we have. So is there a conversion factor we could use or an equivalency that relates moles to particles? Absolutely there is. We just learned it. It's Avogadro's number. It's the mole. One mole is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd particles. So all we're going to do now is we're going to multiply 3 times 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Which gives you 1.806 times 10 to the 24th. And the units are going to be, well, here's the whole thing. When you put moles in the numerator and moles in the denominator, they eliminate each other, and you're left with just particles. So the units here are particles. That's the whole point of dimensional analysis. You want to get rid of the units you started with by putting them in the denominator so that they cancel out. And you want to introduce the units that you want and be left with just those. And that's what we've done. Let's do one more, and I'm going to say, pause the video, give this one a shot, and only press play once you have an answer ready to go with. Also, there's a challenge there at the bottom. Take a look at that. Give that a try.
hope everybody's ready. I hope you stopped the video and gave yourself a chance to figure this out. I'm going to walk you through it. We have 3.5 moles of water. We want to know how many molecules of water we have. Now, molecules is just a specific term for a particle of water, right? Because water is a compound. So a single unit of it is a molecule, not an atom. So we want to know molecules of H2O. So we're going to set up dimensional analysis. Start with what we know, 3.50 moles of H2O. Moles of H2O is going to be our unit down here. We already know that because we just that's what we want. We want to be able to cancel out moles of H2O. And molecules of H2O is our desired unit. We're going to put it up here. What's the equivalency of moles to molecules of H2O? It's Avogadro's number. One mole is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of H2O. So we multiply 3.5 times 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. And we should get 2.107 which I'm going to write as 2.11 with significant figures because we've got three sig figs here and here. 2.11 times 10 to the whoop, 24th power. Units, moles of H2O canceled out. Molecules of H2O was left. So our units are molecules. It's weird. It's like super laggy, so it's hard to write. Molecules of H2O. Now the challenge problem at the bottom, this is where it gets fun. We have 2.11 times 10 to the 24th molecules of H2O. So the question is, how many atoms of hydrogen and how many atoms of oxygen do we have? Well, if you look at one Hydrogen, sorry, if you look at one water molecule, there are two atoms, whoops, gosh, come on. There are two atoms of hy hydrogen and one atom of oxygen in a single molecule of H2O. Which means that if you have, if you had one mole of H2O, you would have two moles of hydrogen within that one mole of H2O. And you'd have one mole of oxygen within that one mole of H2O. So if we have this many molecules of H2O, we are going to have, since there's one oxygen in H2O, we're going to have that number of atoms of oxygen. And we're going to have twice that number of hydrogen. So 4.21 times 10 to the 24th atoms of hydrogen. Right, because we have this many molecules of H2O, but every single one of those molecules has two atoms of hydrogen in it, so we multiply by two. So we actually have like, because there's three atoms in a molecule of H2O, we have three times as many atoms in this many molecules. Just something to think about. Um, it's okay if you didn't get there or you didn't try that one. That's a little bit beyond just where we're at right now in terms of where I expect everybody to be. But if you did give that a try, or if you wanted to think about that, I hope that was, I don't know, interesting or something. So there you have it. Uh, that's a quick lecture on the mole and how to use it as a conversion factor. And that sets the stage for a lot of math and a lot of fun stuff that we're going to do for the next several weeks until the end of chemistry. So until the next video, take care of yourselves, and I will see you soon.